Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Gary from the Orange City Campus of Living Water Community Church with your Wednesday update for September 16, 2020. I have a lot to cover in this update because of the fact that our council just met with Dave Bartlett. I want to give you a whole rundown of what the council talked about with that church consultant. But I also want to give you a few things just for your calendar, just for you to know. So if you're interested in seeing or hearing about that meeting with the consultant, stick through for just a few minutes and I'll get to that. But I want to also remind you that last week's message on Revelation is on your YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, then go ahead and do that and make sure that uh, you pay attention to Sheldon's YouTube channel as well. Both of those are on forallwhothirst.com. There's links on there. So just follow through to that and you'll see past services and also current services. Uh, Revelation 22 is this Sunday. So join us as we talk about a new Jerusalem. Join us as we talk about what God has promised as heaven. It's going to be fantastic, and it's going to be a joyous service. I also want to remind you that a new episode of uh, Gary and Jesse Talk About Stuff is available. Uh, What we've started to do really is update you on a lot of things, not only on events, not only on what's coming up, but also on the sermons, a little bit on what we're preaching about, what we had just preached about, and then we also get into specific topics. Uh, Maybe it's about Sabbath, maybe it's about the Lord's Supper, uh, maybe it's about a bit of theology that we haven't discussed yet, and all of those things are available on Spotify or Google Play or on our website. So check those things out. Uh, It's a great opportunity for you to connect with uh, myself and Pastor Jesse and connect with Living Water. I also want to remind you that the nomination sheets got handed out this past Sunday at the physical locations. Uh, We also are working on making sure those are getting sent out in the next couple of weeks via mail so that we can be sure that if you're not here with us, you're getting it in the mail. Uh, That contains, that list contains everybody who is an eligible member to be nominated for the open positions. And what we are electing for, remember, is care elders here in the Orange City campus. Uh, uh, Sheldon is electing for an administrative deacon to sit on the council. So be sure that you're praying about that. If you have any questions, shoot Donna an email, shoot me an email, and we'll see if we can get those answered. Uh, So the rest of our time, uh, grab a cup of coffee and and sit with me because I was hoping to make it a little bit uh, conversational, if you will, or at least seem like a conversation because I want to walk you through Uh, what we did as a council uh, to sit with Dave Bartlett, to sit with a church consultant. And I want to remind you of why uh, we do this, why we sit with a church consultant. In fact, he gave a fantastic analogy right at the beginning of his time with us uh, that I really believe emphasizes why we ask a third party to come in and give his perspective or give his point of view Uh, He said he took his dad kayaking. Uh, His dad is an elderly man and uh, uh, had some trouble getting into the boat and getting into the actual kayaking, but he was doing fine when the kayak would move forward. It was only when he would stop that he would waver and then actually once fell into the water. And I think that's really true for an organization. That's something that he tried to convey to us. If we're moving forward we're healthy. If we just stop and sit, then we start to waver a little bit. And all cards on the table, I think we've been through that time, right? We've been through the time where we stop and then we start to look and maybe even blame uh, those around us. And if we are going to be a healthy organization, an even healthier organization, we got to keep moving forward. And so that's what the purpose of having a consultant in is uh, to look and see what we can't see, uh, things that might be right in front of our face that we need a third party to come in and notice. So what he did uh, was spend uh, pretty much a whole day with different parts of our leadership. Uh, So he spent a day with our council president, Arlen Scott. Uh, Excuse me, he spent an hour with, uh, with Arlen Scott. He spent an hour with Jesse 
Uh, he spent an hour with myself. He spent an hour with Jesse and myself together to talk about what we see, what we hope, what we dream, uh, even to get into a little bit of wh where's our hearts, uh, where, for me, where's my heart. And that was very, very helpful. Uh, that was very, very positive because obviously if my heart is uh, sore or hurting or even uh, full with the wrong things, then that's going to affect us as a whole. That's going to affect us as an organization. And so we did some great heart work there for both of us as pastors. And we did some uh, discussing about what does that mean for us as leaders then. So we moved into then a time with our council, uh, with our administrative council. And as I have reminded you that administrative council is the team that's tasked with vision, uh, tasked with staffing, uh, tasked with the overall direction uh, to sort of gather all of your information and to speak in a God-ordained way to say, hey, this is where uh, it seems like God is asking us to go. So we spent some time uh, right at the beginning hearing Dave give us a challenge, uh, and almost as a devotional getting started kind of thing, he referenced the Great Commission, uh, go and make disciples. And what he broke it down into was very, very helpful for me. Uh, he said, within go and make disciples, there is a personal go and there is a corporate go. Uh, each one of those disciples was given a specific task. And then as a whole, they were given a big task. And that's no different from what we have in church. Each one of us has a personal definition of what it means to go and make disciples. And that's very, very true for each one of us. It should, I hope, be very, very true for each one of us. I have a calling to do a specific thing. And you might not have that calling. You have a calling that you are supposed to go and do. But I might not have that calling. But then a step further from that says there is something corporately that we are bound together with to go and make disciples. And so what is our corporate go? That's what the question kind of became out of that. And of course, an asterisk on that is that uh, both of those, we go as servants. Uh, how we go makes a big difference. And so he referenced again, the washing of the disciples' feet. Uh, he referenced again, the fact that Jesus gave of himself to go and make disciples, that he asked the disciples to do that, to go and give of themselves. And so we both go, whether it's personal or corporate, we both go as servants, humbly asking God to give us that direction. So then we started with a big question. Uh, and this is such a question that I hope can be incorporated in a lot of our discussions in a lot of our Sunday mornings even. Uh, where is God working? Uh, he said that what he likes to do, not only in consultant situations, but even at his own church, as they start to plan for 12 months, as they start to plan for 24 months, find out where God is already on the move and then partner with him on that. And that's a very healthy uh, thing to do because what it gave us was an opportunity to tell stories around that council table uh, to emphasize that God is already doing things. And so to not hang our head and say, oh, COVID has been so horrible, we haven't been able to do anything, but instead to look at the glass as half full and to say, God is working in a lot of ways. And so let's celebrate that. And then to go even further, let's partner with that. And so I wanted to give you um, about six or seven things that were mentioned under the question, where is God working? The first one was being a safe place for people, uh, being a place for people that don't like the church, uh, being able to be welcoming enough at both campuses that if you got uh, rips in your jeans, if you got a problem with church in general, you're going to still be able to sit in a living water service and hopefully uh, not feel as an outsider, not feel as someone who shouldn't be there. So we emphasize the fact that we want to continue to do that. We want to continue to be that kind of church, and we want to figure out ways, this is the challenge, to help move people out of that season, uh, to move people out of the disdain for the corporate church, to move people out of the fear 
of having been burned or having been hurt by the church. So that was the first emphasis. Where is God working? We continue to be that safe place for people. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about children's ministry in general uh, as an emphasis or as an example of where is God working. Of course, Sue on the Orange City side is doing a fantastic job. Uh, make sure you tell her that. I try to tell her as often as I can also. Uh, just the way that she is giving those YouTube links, the way that she is interacting with the kids on the children's message on Sunday, the way that she continues to think about how these kids are handling COVID time, uh, about the mental things that are coming up for them uh, in a time of possible fear, in a time of possible wondering, how do we give them some certainty? How do we give them some regularity? And so uh, we emphasize the fact that Sue is doing a great job on children's ministry. We also uh, celebrated the fact that Sheldon has these rooms available now, uh, that Allison Cook, uh, who is uh, the children's director in Sheldon, has been putting a lot of effort into the planning. Uh, they are aiming for January for a really good start. And so we see that God is working in those details, that God is getting Sheldon Children's Ministry ready to launch. Uh, this is one of my favorites. The next one, uh, where is God working? We had 30 people at the Global Leadership Summit. Uh, that's up from 20 last year, which is actually up from 10 the previous year. And so to me, that's an incredible growth for living water. Uh, for me, that's an incredible uh, show of the desire to grow in your leadership. And that's discipleship, I really believe it is. Uh, that's the growth of someone as a possible leader. That's like developing all of these skills that I know are there in so many of you and honing those skills, not only to be a leader at church, but even more importantly, maybe to be a leader in your community. And most importantly, to be a leader in your family. Uh, to help lead your children in the way they should go, to help lead your household in the way they should go. Uh, there's so much emphasis on that within the Global Leadership Summit. And so I'm just excited to see that that number keeps growing. I'm excited to see that people are interested in it. I'm excited to see that we continue to have people uh, who show up, for instance, on the Friday morning, the first Friday of every month when we show another video, we have people that want to be there. So... Uh, that's somewhere where I saw God working very, very clearly. Another one, I'll assure you that neither one of the pastors said this, but someone mentioned uh, messages at both campuses are incredibly uh, scripture-filled, uh, incredibly gospel message-filled, and just the emphasis on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior the emphasis on always pointing back to him, whether that's a story from the Old Testament, whether that's the Revelation series that we're doing now, uh, where is God working was answered with messages at both campuses. So thank you for saying that. Um, and we'll continue to work on that, of course. The next one that was answered for where is God working, uh, it was the facility improvements, the Ebenezer campaign. Uh, if you've been here, Physically at the Orange City campus, uh, I, I personally am just in love with the front fellowship area. Uh, oh, I, I kept saying I, I was hoping for like a living room feel up there, and I've seen it used in a bunch of ways. Uh, we do our staff meetings there. I know a couple Bible studies have met there. Uh, prayer team met there a few times. Like just the uh, multi-purpose for that front area is something that I really think we can uh, celebrate. And then that's not it. That's uh, just a little piece of the pie, right? We have our uh, toddler nursery, infant nursery ready to launch in October. Uh, we have Donna set up very, very well to welcome people in. We have the new door system that makes it a nice safe system, not only for Donna, but for all of us here at church. Uh, we have the new prayer room in the worship center. And uh, Mike Notaboom's favorite, uh, we have lights that turn on automatically in the worship center and don't give that nasty buzz. And that's not even it either. Uh, we have sound system improvements coming uh, as sort of a whipped cream on the top of this whole Ebenezer campaign thing. So just celebrating what has happened at the facilities. And that was only from the Orange City side. Uh, from the Sheldon side, the actual rooms that are there, uh, they're improving sound system. They're improving some of the camera stuff as well. So it's just fantastic to see 
that during a time where uh, most are seeing the glass as half empty, uh, we were able to launch into this Ebenezer campaign and say, hey, the glass is half full. Like, look what we could do. It was mentioned a couple times that uh, doing it during this time was an uphill battle for sure. And of course, I have to mention, uh, we still need uh, pledges. We still need donations for the Ebenezer campaign. But the fact that we got this far with uh, the money raising is something to be just wowed by because God has been incredibly faithful. As most churches, as a lot of organizations are seeing giving dip, we're seeing ours uh, stay steady, if not increase a little bit, especially because of online giving, especially because you're sending those checks in. So keep doing that, and thank you for that, and thank God for that, especially. Uh, for the next answer for where is God working, uh, new faces. Uh, both campuses are seeing people show up. Uh, this is a time where most articles I'm reading most churches are saying uh, we're struggling to just keep who we have, uh, knowing that it's going to be a different way forward. It's going to be a different uh, landscape for churches. Uh, a lot of people are going to say, hey, I want to just stay at home. And we're going to have to try to discuss how do we do that well then? Uh, how do we encourage at some point uh, the necessity of being gathered with the flock? But in the Where Is God Working? We're seeing people that are joining us, uh, whether it's online or whether it's in person. We're seeing new faces, people that are desiring to have what Living Water is offering. So that's a huge uh, place to emphasize and to celebrate where is God working. So then, the question became, how do we partner with God in the next six months, in the next 12 months, in the next 24 months, knowing that he is working in those areas, knowing that he is already doing things, how do we jump on that train with him and emphasize these specific things? Uh, there's a few bullet points under those specific answers, six months, 12 months, 24 months. And so I wanted to give you those uh, for you to pray through as well, uh, for you to think about as well. Under the six months, which is really a short-term kind of thing, uh, we want to keep asking that question. Uh, that seems like a, a maybe simple thing, but it's not as simple as you say. Keep asking the question, where is God working? Uh, maybe that's on individual conversations. If I sit down and have coffee with you, uh, maybe it's on a Sunday morning. I can simply do something uh, that emphasizes or, or gets you thinking, where is God working? And then telling the stories of where God is working. That's a theme that kept coming through as a desire uh, from council to tell stories of where God is working. Because what we kept saying, what kept being brought up is that energizes people. That energizes a congregation, that energizes an individual. If I can hear a story of where God is doing something in your life, then I can start to look for that story in my life. And so we're going to work on small ways to keep telling and to keep asking that question of where is God working. Uh, one of the big things for the six-month goal uh, helped Sheldon's children ministry just knock it out of the park. Uh, January, we're really wanting to have that be in all ways a quote-unquote success. And what we really spent time on then, and I love this because uh, we talked about defining success. And so often in our culture, in American Christianity especially, we're going to define success by, hey, did they have uh, 700 kids uh, join in on this first Sunday? And the reality is that's not going to happen. In fact, Dave uh, shared something from his church. They have just a huge group of children's ministry. And so they got really excited for uh, last Sunday, which was going to be their start. And uh, as they usually have 70 kids in each group or, or 100 kids in each group, they had somewhere in the one, two, three kids range. And so many of the team was uh, disheartened by that. And I understand that because you're planning for 100 kids and you have two. But the reality is uh, there is a different form of success that I think we as Christians can hold on to. And we've talked about this. I know we have uh, from uh, the Scorecard uh, one by Reggie McNeil, the book that says, hey, we're not looking for a specific number. We're not looking for 100. We're looking for a specific heart change. And if that means that one kid 
is given the gospel of Jesus Christ, that means if one kid is moved from quote unquote level one to level two, then that's a success. And I think we can put our foot on that pedal and we can really say, where is it that we can define success? And how is it that we can help Sheldon Children Ministry achieve that success? How can they really, really knock it out of the park? And so as a council, as a congregation, my hope and my prayer is that you would join me in praying for the Sheldon Children Ministry. That's the first step. That's the most obvious step. We have the power of prayer and asking that uh, they would have that true success, asking that they would have enough volunteers, asking that they would have all of the things just in place. But also, if need be, Maybe we go over and help some Sundays. Maybe we go over and, uh, and be uh, a volunteer who can pick up afterwards. Maybe we be a volunteer who can uh, help them get the right resource. Whatever it is, let's help Sheldon's Children Ministry knock it out of the park and do a fantastic job. Uh, the third thing under the sixth month, where do we partner with God? It's just amazing how much... Uh, Living water is built on relationships. And I think I've told you this before. I know I have. Um, this is uh, a motive, uh, a mode of operation for living water in my mind. Uh, we begin with relationships. We get to know a person so incredibly well that we can have conversation with them as a friend. And in those conversations, we present the gospel of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, that leads to transformation in someone's life. Hopefully you hear that. I think uh, it's on Sunday morning every time in the video. Uh, the process of relationship, gospel, transformation. Relationship, gospel, transformation. And so the energy that comes behind that is how do we do that when people desire a relationship, especially during this COVID time, and it's ripped away. And we can't really get together as much as we used to. So how do we creatively emphasize community? That was a six month plan or six month goal, if you will. And that has bullet points underneath it too, right? So maybe that's gonna be online. Uh, maybe we're going to have to get creative about, hey, maybe there's a prayer group that meets online. Uh, maybe there's a study group that meets online. Uh, we're emphasizing in the next couple of months we're going to do another book study. Uh, maybe that means joining in on one of those Zoom calls or on something or on a YouTube channel or whatever it is that we end up going with. Uh, some way to promote that community. And the really cool thing, uh, I have to say this, I think, too, uh, we can show you the door but you have to open the door too. So as we're talking about six months here, a six month goal, this isn't just on the pastors. This isn't just on the council. This is on all of us because man, I can tell you, hey, there's a great community offering if you sign up for this study then you gotta do it, you gotta sign up for it. At some point, this is a goal for all of us, not just a goal for leadership. Uh, so that's uh, a six month thing. Uh, then we kind of moved on to 12 months. Like how do we look at a little bit bigger picture and what kind of goals? And here is where it starts getting a little less tangible, right? It has to, uh, because as we're looking at a long range possibility, uh, we know we're going north, but we don't know exactly what street it's going to be on. But we know that's the general direction. And so a few things that we started talking about, especially recognizing where God is working, how can we long-term partner with Him? Uh, we've seen, this was uh, built into the entire conversation, we've seen trust continue to grow. Uh, remember, three years ago, two years ago, there was a time where we were struggling, where that kayak was tipping, and part of it was because you as a congregation maybe didn't know what was council talking about. And council, as a leadership team, sometimes didn't know what are the pastors feeling and knowing. And all of those uh, breakages in communication lead to a little bit of a lack of trust. That's just human nature. And so one of the things that we really talked about was continuing to build trust between each of those specific teams, each of those specific uh, people, each of those specific campuses, if you will. And that means uh, emphasizing communication, emphasizing, uh, hey, what's going on? What's happening? What are you guys talking about? What are you not talking about? All of that kind of stuff is how we continue to build trust. So uh, there was a few things mentioned like, hey, 
uh, the Wednesday update needs to continue uh, and maybe even get even more authentic. So if I can tell you, uh, remind you, hey, don't forget that council met on Monday. Don't forget that care elder team met. Don't forget that the MST team who uh, does a lot of the details that they met. And I can just tell you what each one is doing. Uh, for some of you, uh, that's going to require, again, opening the door. So I'll give you this information, uh, but you have to be the one who says, uh, I'll sit down and listen to it or I'll read about it, that kind of thing. Uh, so just building that trust in the next 12 months, continuing to build upon what we already have, especially uh, between pastors, between council, between campuses as well. We got to find ways to tell Sheldon stories. Uh, Sheldon has to find ways to tell Orange City stories so that trust continues to be built. Uh, this is a really cool one, I thought, uh, in the next 12 months. How do we find the flame uh, and pour gas on it? Meaning, how do we continue to tell those stories and find little glimpses of what God is doing and emphasize that and celebrate that and absolutely say, yeah, that's awesome. Keep going with that. And that might mean, that goes way back to the personal go and the corporate go, that might mean uh, us as a leadership team, us as living water saying to individuals, hey, that's a, that's a fantastic thing. That's a you thing. You go. You chase that. And then being able to say, us as an organization, we want to aim at these things over here kind of idea. So somehow uh, finding those flames and pouring gas on them to help fan them into incredible fire uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, which goes along with this other one, uh, finding ways to tell, a, to tell stories and celebrate God. We talked a lot about the beginnings of living water and how we can celebrate uh, even though there was some hard times as it began, we can celebrate the fact that we're here where we are now, standing on the shoulders of so many that have paved the way for us. And so we're going to continue to tell those stories, continue to celebrate God, not me as an individual, not you as an individual, but celebrate the fact that God has been good in all of this thing. And then way long range, uh, 24 months, um, how do we have a few things that we want to partner with God on, uh, emphasizing worship as not perfect, but authentic. Uh, we continue to work, uh, Damon continues to work on, on ways that we can uh, see this worship, not as achieving perfection, not as uh, us doing something exactly right, but us doing it according to God. Uh, that means uh, there is a word that we continue to use, excellence. And excellence doesn't mean there's no missed notes. Excellence doesn't mean that the words on the screen, there's no typos. Excellence means we do it to the best of our ability. And we uh, talked about the fact that we don't have Toby Mac. Uh, Andrew Wogan isn't Toby Mac. Damon isn't Toby Mac. Whatever name you want to put in there. Uh, but we do have people who are authentic. We have people who are good at what they do. And we want to emphasize that. We want to chase that authenticity for sure. Uh, then, of course, uh, another key thing that we want to focus on in 24 months, emphasize belonging. Uh, how do we continue to show each person that they are a vital part of this kingdom of God? How do we continue to show each person that they are a vital piece of this body of Living Water Community Church in both campuses as we draw together, as we draw closer to God? So those are some long-range, maybe less tangible things, but things that are on the radar for 24 months. All of that uh, puts us into this uh, understanding of the kayak is moving forward. Uh, the kayak isn't shifting as maybe it once was. But we continue to try to put information in front of you in different ways. That's what I do through the Wednesday update. Uh, that's what we do on Sunday morning. Uh, we continue to give you opportunities to walk through that door uh, to show you where the information is, uh, to tell you, check out for allwhothirst.com, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of these things are ways that you can actually feel like you are a part of this because you are a part of this and you are needed. Uh, the thing that I, I wrote down after uh, the entire meeting was just as a pastor, I have to put this in my head as a congregation, we have to put this in our head, just keep chugging along. Uh, it, it seems like it's one step forward, two steps back during this COVID time. I get it, and I understand that. But if we stay faithful 
to who God calls us to be. If we stay faithful to the one little step that he wants us to do, then he will bless that. I guarantee it. And the one thing that is our big direction that we can continue to chase together, follow Jesus by loving God and loving others. Uh, it's cliche, I get it, but to, to know what he would do in a situation is what we are going are gonna to try to do. We're, we are for the gospel. We are for following the fact that Jesus Christ loves you so incredibly much that he died on the cross to save you from your sins. If we keep saying that over and over and over and over again, I really believe that's not going to be uh, uh, met in bad ways from, from him. That's going to be something that he takes and multiplies because we can only say that so much. I can only uh, have spit in my mouth and not say it well enough so many times. But he can multiply that. He can use that in a positive way. So it's I, I get uh, you've heard this so many times, but I'll say it again. Uh, follow Jesus by loving God and loving others. And we're going to keep trying to do that as an organization. And my prayer is that you keep trying to do that as an individual. I hope you've stuck with me through this whole thing. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, what we covered with Dave Bartlett, what we didn't cover with Dave Bartlett, uh, shoot me an email, shoot Arlen an email, shoot Pastor Jeff, Jesse an email, and we'll see if we can answer some of that stuff as we continue to partner together to do that long-range goal, to do that thing of following Jesus by loving God and loving others. Grace and peace to you. I love you all. Can't wait to see you on Sunday. Thanks.